Hey guys, today I will be painting Moloch from the World of Smog, Rise of Moloch. This is the main big bad guy. You can think of him as kind of the abomination from Zombicide. Uh, and he's kind of styled like that too. You notice he's got really tiny legs and a really big kind of a <laughs> torso and, and shoulder structure going on. Uh, normally I don't like that style. I think it kind of works with him just because he's kind of this um, animal person as opposed to um, you know, just, just like a, a dude or whatever. Um, anyway, uh, and he also, I think, at least in my eyes, looks a little boring. You can be the judge of that as we go along. I think he ends up looking really, really awesome. In fact, I'm pretty proud of this paint job. I think it turned out quite well. Also, I want to try the non-metallic metal on the gold, so wait until you see the end result first. <laughs> it looks kind of rough at, at first, but, uh, I think not too bad for a first attempt. All right, but let's get right into it. So I'm going to start by prepping the miniature, and he does have quite a few mold lines, though they're not too hard to get to. In fact, uh, the gaps are probably a bit worse than that, um, mainly because I don't see any that go over either his fur on the on on the top there, or his kind of textured uh, cloth uh, tunic skirt thing that he he's got going on. Um, on his waist so really just kind of this skin portion here that's not too bad at all and it's placed pretty well I'm, I'm pretty happy with this not hard you just I mean it, there's a bit of it right that you kind of have to work towards so it takes a bit of a time but it's not uh, it's not difficult by any means Okay, so now I have the liquid green stuff from Citadel, and I'm just going to be scraping it into uh, these gaps here. And I'm doing a pretty quick job here. You could probably take a bit more time, especially when it comes to smoothing it out, if you wanted. Um, I'm trying to play around with how how much I actually have to do that, and how much the paint will just blend it in anyway. I think it looks fine uh, by the end, so I, I think the minimal kind of... Uh, scraping is fine. Uh, before, especially when I did like the Daikaiju and uh, other miniatures from Rising Sun, I spent a lot of time smoothing it out and making sure it was it was perfect. Um, but uh, I I don't think that's always necessary. So anyway, uh, just be on the lookout for that as, as we go along. But anyway, just around the um, the torso there and then the, the neck. Okay, so primed them in gray. Now again with these colored um, miniatures, you can really see how the primer does not cover all of it, and it doesn't need to. You don't need him to be completely gray for the paint to stick. The The primer doesn't have to fill every single little gap, which is nice. And, and I'm really glad you can actually see that on this, because a lot of times they're gray miniatures with a gray primer. You can't really tell how much I prime it. This is about how much I prime my miniatures, so not a whole lot, and I've never really had any issues. So anyway, we're starting with red leather. Um, for his skin and uh, this is going to not look the right color after a wash and some highlights I think it ends up pretty well. I did notice that on the concept art it, it almost goes white in these extreme highlights. I'm not going to do that exaggerated lighting. Um, I don't want him to look um, I don't know fake. Uh, I'm, I'm trying to paint them pretty realistic here. Um, it's just my typical paint style. So you, by all means, you can keep brightening it more and more and really kind of um, cast this kind of real stark lighting and highlights um, like the concept art is. I'm taking the color um, and kind of replicating that, but I'm not doing those extreme kind of stylized highlighting that the concept art does. So anyway, I'm using a regiment brush here, and it, by all means, if you have a monster brush or a size 2 or maybe even a 3, go at it. Um, around the necklace you might have to you know, use a smaller brush like this, but otherwise it's just big, vast areas that you need to kind of paint this in.
All right, so these legs, by the way, and really this entire under portion is kind of hard to paint. It's just so close to the base. Um, he is kind of barely attached to the base. I mean, it, I don't, I'm not afraid he's going to pop off, but you probably could remove him fairly easily. But the under portions of these tunics and these legs are kind of hard to get to. Right now it's fine because nothing else is painted, so you just kind of, you know, shove your brush in there, but you'll see later on we'll struggle a little bit. Now that we're done with that though, let's go in and move on to the werewolf fur. This is going to be the base color and coat for his uh, his hair, but we're gonna we're gonna highlight it up a little bit and um, wash it down and whatnot. As you can see, I'm spinning, I'm being very careful here. Um, may as well. It, the definition on this miniature is fine. It's it, you can totally just have your brush work it. You just need to kind of be close and let the the brush follow the mold line, but uh, uh or the the mold structure. Um, but yeah, after you get past this kind of portion on his hair, it's actually really quick. I'm going to slow down a little bit on the back of his hair too. We'll, we'll get to that in a bit. Okay, so moving on to the back portion, as you can see, I'm going to kind of outline it because I'm going to spend, uh, again, a little bit more time being slightly careful here just to make sure I don't have to touch up the um, the skin on the other side. So once I fill in this outline, though, I'm just going to quickly brush in the rest uh, very quickly, and it, it's actually pretty easy at that point. But you are working with kind of a dark color here, so just try and be careful. Okay, moving on to Rhinox Hide. This is just a darker brown I'm using for the necklace. I'm not going to highlight this up or anything like that. It's very small and, and just kind of a, a, a an accent color anyway. It's just here to hold his kind of um, Eye of Raw necklace or, or whatever that is. Okay, so again, I'm not going to try, I'm going to try non-metallic non metal here, so I'm going to start with gold brown, and uh, as it kind of suggests, it's kind of a gold. Now, I was talking a bit with uh, some co-workers, I work with several people that, uh, you know, actually have art degrees and whatnot, and they were talking about how um, gold is actually very orange and red into it, and they're just kind of a... Uh, I don't know, desaturated or something like that, either way, uh, to where they look kind of brown, but... Um, really, it's not so much brown as it is reds, uh, which surprises me, but that's because I know nothing about art. Um, but either way, I think this turns out pretty well. I'm pretty happy with it, especially for kind of a, a little bit of a brighter gold, perhaps. Uh, but again, this is just the base color. So I'm going to be doing several different things, doing a lot of touch-up. Uh, so don't judge me throughout the process. Judge me at the end <laughs> and uh, see if, if you think it turned out okay. Um, if you change anything, if maybe if you have any ideas, go ahead and let me know in the comments below. I'd love to hear them. I didn't do a lot of research on this, 
um, I just kind of went for it. So Agrax Earthshade, here's the brown wash that I'm doing here. Um, again, maybe I should have used Reichland for a little bit of, of red, I'm, I'm not sure. Um, that being said, uh, I'm going to use this Agrax Earthshade in several spots, which is kind of nice to reuse the wash. And I'm going to put it a little heavy here at first, and it, it, it did the streaking, I forget the term for that, but it, it, it kind of leaves streak marks and brush marks uh, throughout, probably because I'm not using so much. Uh, but I don't really know a good way around that. I don't know if I could just use a, a Lamian medium perhaps and that would prevent that But that would also make it more of a glaze, which I guess is kind of what I'm wanting it to do anyway So I don't know. Uh, I'll have to continue to play around with this, but I think good first attempt So we still have the Agrax or shade I've upgraded to a big brush because again We are going on all of the skin here and we're gonna go ahead and do the uh, fur or the hair as well. So we're just going to use this Agrax or shade on pretty much everything we've painted so far. Um, now this, he has a lot of crevices and some of them you want it to pull into. Some of them maybe not so much. There are some crevices that are very extreme, like right there on his shoulder. Uh, you might want to touch up. Uh, I didn't right away and uh, ended up doing it as it was uh, almost dry. I saved it. I mean, I didn't even have to touch it up, which is good. Uh, but if it had dried completely, I think that would have been um, uh, some touch-up involved on my, on my part. So just kind of judge it, play around with it. Don't just slap it on there and necessarily uh, call it good. Uh, you can see right there on the side of his foot, I left a whole bunch too. I had to, had to soak up with a, a, a more dry brush. And uh, yeah, don't forget his, his neck and hair. Um, but be careful of the, you know, the parts you haven't painted yet, like the, uh, the horns there. Okay, so now we're back out to red leather, and this is just to, uh, you know, bring out back that base color. But really, you can count this as your first highlight, right? Because now you have the um, this kind of mid-range highlight where it's kind of darker, and now it's lighter, um, but in the same same hue, the same color here. And uh, again, lots of muscles. This, this dude is is uh, ripped. I mean, he is he's been working out um, down in hell or wherever it is he comes from. Um, the Egypt afterlife, I don't know, um, but because uh, I haven't gotten that far in the story um, for the game. However, uh, actually, you know what? That's that's a good a good segue here. So um, one of the reasons I'm painting Moloch now is because you can actually now buy this at your friendly local gaming store. Uh, Rise of Moloch is out to purchase, and um, while I don't have a review out yet, and I apologize for that, I'm in the middle of a move. Everything's packed up. Even my all of my board games is are in a box right now. I have to pull them out to put like when I was done with him, I had to put them back in the box. I had to dig it out of there. Um, a fantastic game. It's a re I really like Rise of Moloch. It's a one of the best one versus many uh, board games I've I've played. So I apologize for not having a proper review out now. I still will do that. Um, however, uh, the game comes highly suggested for me. The mechanics are solid. Um, it, down to the turn order and the leveling up system and d just the, the quest structure. So uh, out of all the missions we've played, every single one has come down to one to two turns where it was still anybody's game and it just depended on maybe who finally you know finished first. Um, so really down to the wire, um, very, very good tactical game, I really have been enjoying it. Uh, so anyway, this is a like you know the main bad guy. He's one of the the bigger miniatures in in the core game box here. And uh, as you can see, with all these muscles, while it's kind of a pain and it takes a long time, as you can see, I'm spending a lot of time on here. Totally worth it. It's the biggest portion of the miniature, and the first thing people are going to notice. And it, trust me, it, it it's worth the effort. Uh, all these muscles really add a lot of you know character and definition to them that really make them kind of pop out, especially on the board game. So we're going to keep doing this, and uh, I will you know, talk to you again in a bit when we move on from this.
Now, real quick with these legs, again, it is kind of hard. I didn't even bother highlighting up all the way up there. It'd be all in shadow anyway, and you can't really, I mean, if somebody's picking up your 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 character to look underneath the skirt, first of all, question that person. After you question that person, then exclaim that, you know, this, this, this is fine, and uh, I was not expecting anybody to look up his skirt to see if I highlighted up his upper legs. Okay, so here I have Leather Brown out, and this is going to be for the dry brush. I would actually suggest not doing this now. Um, because he's, his arm is out like this, he's such a wide miniature, it's, it's hard to find a holder that will allow you to um, you know, hold him properly to where you don't have to touch the top of him. And so your the oil on your fingers um, are going to rub that off, and you're going to have to dry brush again. Now, it, it's fine, dry brushing again gives you the exact same result, it, it's easy to touch up, but you may as well just do it afterwards. On these um, other portions, I am just painting it on. However, a dry brush wouldn't really work as well, and you'd probably get the skin. Now, I will also say, if, if you ever come across the portion where you want to paint the top, but you don't want your your the oils of your skin as you're holding the miniature to mess with it, you can always matte varnish at any time. Paint will stick to the matte varnish just as if it was sticking to the plastic. So here I have the gold brown out again, and I'm just doing a little bit of touch up. I'm going to do even more later on. This is just kind of a, a first pass at it. I'm just going to kind of mold over, play around with it. And then as I highlight it up, determine kind of the final, uh, you know, ratio of colors and smoothness that I, I believe I need anyway. All right, next up is beige, and this is a, uh, a kind of my extreme highlight of the gold here. I know a lot of people use white. Um, I did not. I wanted to kind of be in the same the same kind of uh, color range here, and this is still you know a little bit yellow, but you know much closer to white. Um, and I I know I think it works really well. So you guys can can let me know if if you think I should have gone brighter. And I didn't. Again, I'm trying not to do these kind of extreme highlights. I don't want it to look like it's like you know super polished or anything or uh, just anything crazy like that where, um, I, I know some, uh, again, I think people sometimes do very extreme, uh, things, especially with armor. You look at, like, Warhammer 40k kind of armor with the outline and it looks like it's from, like, Tron or something, right? And I'm, I'm not going for that. I'm trying to make it look a little bit more natural here. Though, again, first time, so, you know, uh, by all means, give me some feedback, especially if you've done this before, maybe you have some pointers. I would, I would, I would love to hear them. Alright, so now I got gold brown out again. So now I have kind of all three kind of uh, colors, right? Or, uh, you know, at least the, the different variances of, sh of shade here. So now I'm kind of doing this final blend in to just try and uh, see where I want it. As you can see, I'm bringing the gold brown down a lot more on the top here and kind of blending the two in on his necklace, which I think his necklace turned out the, the best. I, I really like actually how that looks. All right, so next up, we're taking some white into the red leather. This is going to be for kind of a, uh, a highlight on the, the muscles here. So again, I'm covering less and less as I do this. So this is going to be um, less than the red leather I put on before. As you can see, especially on, on, the, on the muscles here, it, it's kind of an 80% of the 80% I already covered. Right, so just a smaller and smaller portion. And this is, again, here just to let the muscle definition pop out, especially from a distance. Um, to where, uh, from like the board game table, you can really tell all the muscles and they're all popping out uh, appropriately. Uh, otherwise, they do kind of tend to blend together a bit and wash out.
All right, and now white even more, but this is just for the veins. So he's got a few veins kind of popping out here. And one of the nice things I like about the veins popping out, besides the fact that little details like that are, are cool, is because he's so much skin, this really adds a little bit of variance in the miniature, which I really like it. It just changes it up a little bit and makes it more, I think, visually appealing. And uh, I think it looks pretty cool, especially at the end. All right, next up is Dark Sea Blue. This is one of my favorite colors I, I regretfully don't get to use too often. Uh, I think I've only used it once before on the, was it the Turtle Clan Daimyo from Rising Sun, I believe? Um, anyway, uh, this is a great color. I originally was just gonna do gray. It's kind of hard to tell in the concept art what it is. I don't think it's quite pure gray there. Um, but one of the nice things here is it does add a bit of color. Um, but but it's still in fitting with the rest of the miniature, I believe. Uh, very good color choice, if you ask me. Uh, by all by all means, steal it. Again, having to take it off of that um, holder here to try my best to get in there. This is where I said we're gonna come back later because it actually goes, you know, uh, around uh, his underside, you know, covers bottom and, and whatnot. But uh, it's so hard to get in there and get it accurate. You're gonna have- I touched it up a little bit with the red leather just to try and get some more definition of those legs, uh, but again, I wouldn't worry too much about it. You're not gonna ever see this. Um, in fact, I've handed this to people to look at and they never look under there um, to, to see how well it's painted there, but I, I think I did as good of a job as I can. It's just so hard with that base there, um, and it's really dark. <laughs> You're painting with a dark color. Um, you know, so just make sure you get the sides and kind of what you can easily see, and I think you're good. All right, next up is Astro Granite. I'm gonna go ahead and put this on the base now so it has plenty of time to dry. So by the time I do get uh, to the known oil wash that we'll, we'll inevitably do, you know, get rid of all those cat hairs, you know, uh, it, it's all dry and ready for me. I don't have to sit and wait or go do something else and come back to it. It'll just be done by the time I'm, I'm ready for it. Now there's a uh, you know some, some tough parts here really close to the base, but you know, you can just play with it and uh, I'm scraping it fairly thin, but leaving it a little clumpy in some spots to just change the variance of, of uh, how high it is a little bit. And Astro Granite, if you try and pile it up, it, it actually smooths out a little bit as uh, it doesn't quite get as, as rocky as scraping it. So it just changes the, the texture, uh, makes it a little bit more uneven. Alright, now is the Nolan Oil, but I'm going to go ahead and start on the uh, the skirt here. So this was actually um, the next day. So I, I do apologize, I, I, I kinda fibbed a bit about the base. Uh, if you don't want to wait, um, then just paint the base sooner. Um, I would wait until after the the feet are done, mainly because if you paint the feet on the Astro Granite, you're gonna end up getting a little bit um, on the Astro Granite and then have to touch up the Astro Granite as well. So do uh, right after the skin perhaps then you can do the base. But again heavy coat of Nuln Oil on the uh, the base here. I didn't put nearly as heavy on the, the skirt. Okay so next up is the Dark Sea Blue again and that is just going to again bring out the base color and add as the first level highlight. Though I'm covering most of the miniature here and it's not if you notice the the lightness of it is not changing that much instead this is really just adding that hint of kind of that green blue that that you get from the dark sea um, color and so it's it adds that color back and uh, it helps uh, guide the rest of the highlights Okay, so now we're adding white to that, and so now we're actually are highlighting up, so we'll brighten up a little bit. Um, again, this is in line with the concept art, and you don't want it too dark anyway. Um, but again, no crazy highlights or anything like that. So uh, just try and judge where the light would, would cast, definitely wherever it's billowing up, wherever there are ridges, um, and wherever you kind of want to add more definition to it. All 
All right, next up is white again. This is going to be the final highlight. It's going to be kind of a more of an edge highlight. As you can see, I'm almost just tracing. Um, I'm not doing a lot of um, spaces. I will a little bit like on that knee there. So we're like right there on the knee, um, on the upturned portion where the leg is. But for the most part, this is uh, very much edge highlighting. Okay, and now we're bringing that beige down into here again. I guess I could have done this at the same time. Um, originally, I thought I wanted to do the bottom portion first, that bottom skirt. On second thought, I think, because I ended up having to touch up on a few spots, it almost would have been easier to do the dark sea blue of the bottom skirt afterwards. Um, it's, it's debatable, and again, getting underneath there is just so hard. Um, it, it's not... It's not easy. I get it, and it looks great for the miniature. It's just, as a painter, sometimes those things are, are, are hard to do. Um, be careful when you're going up to the skin here um, that you, you know, obviously you've already completely highlighted up the skin, so you don't want to don't want to mess it up. But the line is very nice and, and crisp there, again, from that gap that, uh, that I've, I've filled. And as you can see, I think it turned out great with the gap there uh, and how I filled it, and I didn't have to... Um, you know, super make it, you know, smooth or anything, because it just kind of adds as almost a, a shadow anyway. So in my mind, it looks great. Um, you can always smooth it out more if, if you feel the need to. But uh, yeah, just a quick kind of base coat of this. And then we're going to move on to Drake Tooth. So we're going to go ahead and do the um, the horns in the Drake Tooth. And uh, they're spirally and uh, kind of difficult to work with just because they kind of wrap around so they have sides and... Uh, the ears right there, you gotta watch out for the ear. I ended up having to touch up the ear, but because the tops of the ears will be highlighted anyway, you just use your last highlight you use, and uh, you're, you're good to go there. Okay, so now we're going to use Ivory, and this is for the eyes, and uh, I'm taking my time here, but it's really well defined, and as you can see, I have no problems uh, actually doing this. This is like live speed here, doing one of the eyes, I'm going to speed up the next one, but uh, yeah, not too bad at all. Very well defined eyes, so they, whenever they're textured and pop out like that, they I think they're easier. And then we're also going to do the, uh, the snout in this this ivory as well. Um, you could have done Drake Tooth, but I didn't want the same color so prominent on his face in two different spots, so I went with the ivory here. Um, there are probably some other colors you could use too, but with the wash and a little bit of blending, I think this ends up really well and isn't like a clown. Okay, so I'm using Abaddon Black here for inside. Later on, I'm going to use Black Gray, and if you don't want to use another color, by all means use that black gray here. Um, I did, I would have if I had thought of it, um, but I had actually forgotten to plan inside the mouth, so I just put in some black in there. Okay, so Drake Tooth is back out, um, and this is to do the teeth. So what you could have done instead is done the ivory first, and then just done the Drake Tooth all at the same time. Um, again, hindsight is twenty twenty here. But the teeth are really well defined, and it's really easy to paint. But be sure to get kind of the, the tops and bottoms of them too, so they have a little bit of depth to them. Alright, now Screaming Skull are for the nails. Now, I, with between the Ivory and the Drake Tooth and the Screaming Skull, they're all fairly similar colors, and if you wanted to um, not use all three, by all means do so. Um, I like having a slight variances in the color, I think it makes it a little bit more natural. Um, you know, your teeth aren't necessarily going to be the same color as your nails. However, on a miniature like this, it would totally work, so don't feel bad if, if you don't have all the colors or if you, you just want to use maybe one kind of off-white color or, or maybe just 
um, the horns and teeth, and then everything else is another one. Um, but I'm using three here. So uh, the nails on the feet, by the way, are totally there, though one of the feet only seems to have four. I just let it go. No, nobody cares. Okay, so now we're gonna soft tone all of that stuff that we just painted. Um, so we're just gonna just kind of plop it on there. Again, the soft tone's barely going to affect the skin, and it's not going to uh, uh, do anything but help blend it. So I don't even be super careful on that. I do put it on the eyes as well. I don't want them glowing or anything. But yeah, so like on the feet, I just wipe it across. Like there's no need to be super careful here with such a light tone on this this darker skin. It's not gonna do anything bad at all. Okay, so now I have red leather out, and this is that blending I told you about. I didn't really like how solid of a line this ended up being, so I'm just kind of lightly feathering or, you know, putting almost like little hair strokes, um, like you would do it like where the hair meets the, the scalp and the forehead in the front um, around there, just to kind of blend it slightly before I highlight it back up. Now, I am highlighting in Drake Tooth. Um, I... I didn't want it so bright, and the Drake Tooth is a little bit less brighter than the Ivory, so I'm going to go ahead and actually highlight in Drake Tooth. It's still a highlight from the Washed, um, and it also adds, I think, a little bit of color um, blending there that, I don't know, I think it ended up nicely, and I it was more reactionary uh, to how bright the Ivory ended up being. Now for the horns, they have these textures, so just draw straight lines across it and you're, you're good to go. Okay, now I do have the Screaming Skull back out for the nails. The nails are prominent enough and a different enough color that I did want to just highlight them back to the base color. Okay, so here's that black gray that I had kind of mentioned before, and this is for his, uh, his little pattern here. Now, this is interesting because I'm not sure if they added the texture on here to try and represent that pattern, but obviously it, it wouldn't. And in fact, I think if you dry brushed on this dark color on top, first of all, good luck with that. Second of all, I'm not sure it, it wouldn't look the same. Uh, but drawing on these symbols are kind of difficult as well, though I suppose it's probably a bit more natural if it's not super organized and straight. Um, anyway, I think it ends up really well at the end. I'm really happy with it, but uh, really it's just a N and a U, right? So some are flipped uh, versus others, and I'm putting them more or less in a straight line, but changing the spacing a little bit. Um, you can do whatever, but as you can see, just kind of a, in fact, I end up doing more like V's <laughs> than, than U's, and I only do it on the textured portion. On this portion, I'm just going to get that beige out, I'm going to highlight it. I thought about hand drawing it on there, but because the texture is so much different, I, I decided to not do it on the back side, right, as if the back side is like the, kind of the, the hide portion of it, instead of the fur. And uh, I think it, it, it does a drastic change, which is nice too. In the concept art, it's on both but I'm not sure that quite makes sense with how the miniature is with the added texture. All right, we are almost done. Evil Sun's Scarlet, I'm gonna be doing this for all of the, the kind of uh, nemesis agents here. So they're all gonna be in this really stark, bright red. This is pretty much the brightest red I have. Um, even more than like pure red from Army Painter, there, there is a difference. This is definitely a very kind of bloody bright red that I think is perfect for evil characters such as Moloch. Okay, last step. Administratum Gray, just like all of my other Rise of Moloch miniatures, uh, this is just a dry brush, and it's a heavy dry brush. Um, I'm not doing two different colors, I'm doing going straight to this. Um, I really like how stark and kind of almost smoky and... Uh, you know, it, it, I think it looks really nice. So, kind of a heavy, high dry brush of Administratum Gray. It also means it's really hard to mess up. Right? You just, you just 
kind of plop it on there, and uh, then you're done. Speaking of done, let's go into matte varnish it. This is the new Citadel matte varnish that I use on all of my miniatures. And here is the final miniature. Here is Moloch from the World of Smog, Rise of Moloch. Again, I think he turned out way better, and I'm really happy, not only with how he turned out, but just how cool he looks. I, I was kind of debating. I wanted to paint him to kind of uh, do my video on how the, uh, you know, you can actually buy this in, in a store now uh, because I do like the game so much. I really wanted to, uh, actually wanted him on launch day. I didn't quite make it, but uh, I knew he was going to be the one to kind of announce that. But I don't know, he looked really boring just plain plastic, but painted up, I really like him. I think he looks great. I can't wait to fight him. I'm sure it will happen sooner or later. <laughs> um, probably sooner than I imagine, but maybe not. Um, either way, um, a great game, so if you want to go ahead and buy it, uh, I've, it's literally my family's favorite game to play right now. Um, I, I enjoy it more than Rising Sun, but it's also more of a game style than I like, and, uh, not all of my family likes Rising Sun as much as me. Either way, great one versus mini, kind of, it's not really dungeon crawler per se, but it is a good game in that regard, and this miniature I think came out fantastic. I'm really happy with them. I like the highlighting. You could probably highlight it up again one level higher on the skin if you desired. I don't. I think this kind of more realistic um, color and lighting I think is, is kind of my preferred style here. But anyway guys, let me know what you thought about this. Go ahead and you know press that like button if you did enjoy it. Leave me a comment, especially about that non-metallic metal that I did. Anyway, before I end, I do want to thank all of my patrons. You can see some of them here on this list here. Thank you so much to all of you, all of my viewers, all of my backers, uh, all of, just everybody. You guys are great. This is a great hobby to be in, and I'm so happy that I can uh, share my passion for these miniatures with you all. So anyway, thanks again, guys, and I will talk to you again soon.